refinery. So dark. Pay attention, Daniel. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. Thank you, Alexander, for being the most unclear person in the world. You're like the man tat for crying out loud. than a month since my last entry. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. 
He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision, in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together, as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? Just, Just wonderful. wonderful. I am insane. I feel the need to continue this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa. This must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. 
He told me about the nature of glass, how it eventually collapses on itself, like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. Yeah, I am, uh...
guys. screwed here very well. Oh shit. Okay. You know what? 
Screw it. This is fun. I don't care. See you next time.